Good evening. It's Tuesday the 21st of February and it's time for the news on RIC2. Turkish Cypriot leader Mustafa Kenji has not yet made clear whether he will attend a meeting scheduled for Thursday with President Anastasiadis, even after a meeting with Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlut Cevusoglu. Cevusoglu said after several hours of talks with Mustafa Kenji and Turkish Cypriot political leaders that Turkey would like to follow a constructive stance, but this will depend on the Greek Cypriot side making amends to what it called its mistake meaning the Enos' vote in Parliament. He added that Turkey will continue to be on the side of Turkish Cypriots, adding that this message goes to what he called the Enos' dreamers. Cevosoglu said that with the Enos' vote, the Greek Cypriot side has shown its true intentions. Mustafa Kenji said that there are two conditions for a Cyprus solution a rotating presidency, and an effective participation in decision-making. President Anastasiadis has said in an interview with the Athens News Agency that Akinji is following delay tactics in the negotiations to gain time until after a scheduled referendum in Turkey in mid-April, which is designed to enable President Erdogan to become an all-powerful executive president of the country. Elizabeth Speha, the United Nations Special Representative in Cyprus, will have a meeting with President Anastasiadis tomorrow morning to explore the next moves in the Cyprus negotiations. Speha met Turkish Cypriot leader Mustafa Kenji this afternoon. A source of the Greek Cypriot side, when asked whether Thursday's meeting of the two community leaders will be held as scheduled, said we'll be there. Transport Minister Marios Dimitriades today repeated his claim that several machines at the port in Limassol have been vandalized by former employees after a private company, Eurogate, took over operations at the container terminal. Dimitriades was replying to a statement by a union official which had called him a liar in making his allegations before two parliamentary committees yesterday. The union official said it was a shame for the minister to make such allegations, which he said were insulting the former employees at the port. Dimitriades said he got his information about machinery having been damaged from the director of the economic department of the port authority, which ran the port until its privatization. The minister also said that by making these charges, he did not intend to clear Eurogate from its responsibilities for the long delays in delivering containers. Advocates for Limassol Mayor Nikos Nikolaidis and the electoral officials in last year's mayoral election today notified the Supreme Court that they will file an objection to a petition by the former mayor of the city for the recounting of votes. Former Mayor Andres Cristo and five of his supporters filed a case with the Supreme Court in its capacity as an electoral court, saying that there have been discrepancies in the counting of votes that resulted in Nikolaidis winning the election by just nine votes. If their action is successful, it will lead to the recounting of votes in 119 electoral centres in Limassol. The court set March the 20th to hear the objections and decide on its further moves. Technocrats representing Greece's international lenders are expected to return to Athens within the next few days to complete a stalled assessment of the country's economy. Greece and its international lenders agreed yesterday to let teams of experts work out new reforms to Greek pensions, income tax and labour markets that would allow Athens to eventually qualify for more cheap loans. Greece needs a new tranche of financial aid under its 86 billion euro bailout by the third quarter of the year to meet debt repayments. The Greek government said in a note that the new measures to be agreed upon will not involve even one euro's more austerity. But Greek media reported that they will lead to further cuts in pensions that would reach to 35 percent from the years 2020 to 2025. Russia's combative ambassador to the United Nations, Vitaly Churkin, died suddenly in New York last night after being taken ill at work. The Russian Foreign Ministry gave no details on the circumstances of his death, but offered condolences to his relatives and said the diplomat had died one day before his 65th birthday. 
It declined to comment on reports that Cherkin had been taken to a hospital shortly before his death. A U.S. government official who was not authorized to speak publicly on the case said that Churkin had died of an apparent heart attack. A federal law enforcement official said that there appeared to be nothing unusual about the ambassador's death. Search and rescue team searching for a missing diver for a fourth day today expanded their scope of search to cover up to the fringes of the occupied part of Cyprus to the east and also to the west where he disappeared. Andreas Yangu, age 31, went missing on Saturday after he went spearfishing near Pomos village. Police are patrolling off the coast of Pomos to Gado Birgos to the east and to the west up to Kate Arnaudis, the most western tip of Cyprus. The patrol boat searching to the east passed off the Turkish-occupied enclave of Gokina without being harassed by occupation soldiers. Turkish boats and a helicopter were seen searching the area. Police are investigating a case of burglary of several paintings from a house in Limassol after a report by an interior decorator. He told police that eight paintings worth over 20,000 euros disappeared from the house of a wealthy Romanian that he was decorating. He said that the owner, a wealthy businessman and art collector, had given him the key to his house to decorate ahead of his summer vacations. The decorator said the house had been broken into by unknown people. Now for the weather forecast, mostly clear skies are initially expected tomorrow, but cloud cover after midday may lead to isolated light rain and possible showers with snow or sleet over higher ground. Winds will be light to moderate northeasterly to southeasterly, force 3 to 4 over slight seas. Temperatures will reach 16 Celsius inland and in coastal areas and 5 over the mountains. It will be mostly fine over the next three days with cloud cover at times. Temperatures will go up slightly. That's all from us here. Join us tomorrow for more news in English. Have a very good evening.